Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the e-commerce lab by EcomC, the place where everything related to Amazon FBA private label and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, your host, founder and CEO of EcomC, and today we'll bring you another special guest. His name is Shane Barker, who is the founder and CEO of TraceFuse, which is one of the top services right now in the space when it comes to removing reviews that are negative. We know in the Amazon space, this has always been something so complex to navigate, to understand how to do, how to even do it in, in a compliant way. I don't know, a chain company is all about that. And it's definitely a pleasure to have him today because I feel reviews are really king on Amazon. And if you have negative reviews, like it's really difficult to keep scaling your product and your brand. And we're going to be talking about what are some of the things that Trace Fuse can do for you to mitigate those things. So Shane, it's a pleasure to have you here on the show. How you doing, my friend? Doing awesome, man. Doing awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about being here, man. We've been uh, we've been planning this for a little while, and then finally, like I was saying earlier, the moon's aligned, and here we are. So um, I've yeah. been I've been pumped about this making this happen, and, and here we are. So this is the moment. I'm excited. Finally, finally, yeah, it's a pleasure. I know we're both very busy guys, and as you say, <laughs> sometimes it's tricky, but yeah, here we are, and I think. You know, it, it's excited to have you on board because I think this is a topic that on, on my podcast we haven't really touched a lot because, let's be honest, most people don't really know how to deal with negative reviews and it's always been a topic that not a lot of people have experienced. on. And having having you today, I think it's going to add a ton of value in, to my community and to the Amazon space because it's something that we both know negative reviews really can kill or make your business and it's going to be interesting to see how with your company we can navigate that. Now, before we jump into that, I know you are a serial entrepreneur and you have an interesting background. So I first want to learn more about who is Shane, how you jump into the e-commerce space and how you basically got the idea of funding TraceFuse, yeah? Yeah, man, I don't know how much time we have, but I have a pretty <laughs> pretty long background, man, but I'll, I'll try to keep it quick so we can talk about the things everybody wants to hear about is removing negative reviews on Amazon. But I really have been in the digital space for well, ever since it was the digital space. I've been doing digital okay. marketing for a long time, building websites, um, SEO, search engine optimization. I actually used to teach at UCLA. I created the influencer marketing mm -hmm. curriculum there at UCLA. Um, wow. And I used to own a bar in Chico, California. I owned that for a few years. I built a real estate company up um, from zero to 130 employees in less than two years, got an evaluation of 25 million. Um, I don't know. There's all there's all kinds of stuff. That's I'm only telling you my successes. I've had plenty of failures too. Let's look, you know, I was yeah. when people talk about all their successes, it wasn't all just uphill for me. There's yeah, of course. A lot of ups and downs, but um, yeah. So I've been doing that for the longest time. Jumped in, looked at uh, reviews for Amazon just because I had some clients that I was consulting um, in the e-commerce space. Obviously, there was some bleed over into um, you know into Amazon. Started to yeah. kind of look into the Amazon space realized how big the opportunity was there working with sellers there i um, started doing some of that and then really was asking you know i always wanted to have some kind of a SaaS product or service um and yeah. then all of a sudden we started talking to the sellers and we're like what's the biggest headache what's the thing that's causing you to not be able to sleep at night and you know a lot of the sellers that we talked to they were kind of over it they're kind of like there's just nothing we can do you know i got a i had a mm -hmm. seller tell me one time he's like it's like having a, a rock in your sandal that you can't remove like you can still walk Right. You might bleed a little bit, but it's not going to make it so you can't walk. So he's like, we just kind of assume there was nothing we can do. So I I took that head on and said, all right, this is something that I'm going to I'm going to figure out. And I'll be honest, as we all know, it's not an easy task. I thought it was going to be a lot easier. You know, I'd invest some money, six months of time. We'd knock it out. We would break the code. And that's not what happened. We'll talk about that story. It was a lot longer, a lot more money. And, you know, by the, you know, about year three, I was looking around going, man, maybe I should have tried something yeah. else. Maybe I should have done something else. So it's a long, long history of a lot of failures and where to where we've got today. So now, once again, as you said, we're 100% compliant with Amazon. Amazon loves what we do. Um, and once again, some good stuff's happening there. So we'll, I'm sure we'll probably jump into that a little later in the podcast. Love it, man. Yeah, what a background. And yeah, it's, it's, it's actually nice that you mentioned that uh, during your journey that you say it's not all rainbows when it comes to being an entrepreneur because i feel like sometimes when people especially hear this podcast and we bring so so many successful people like you we might assume that it's all like a, a walk on the park but it's nice that you mentioned that you know it's ups and downs and it's part of the journey you know and, and it's something that we need to make clear and be realistic to how the entrepreneur journey works like right 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, it's not easy. If somebody tells you it's easy, they're they're selling you a course or something. Yeah. That's what you got to yeah. be careful. They go, hey, this is easy. Just take my course. Now, courses are great, right? I mean, it can help yeah, you yeah. with your learning curve, right? Sell at your learning curve, but you know, don't. If somebody's laying, you know, half clothed on a Ferrari with yeah. a tiger, be very <laughs> careful. Just be very careful. Is what I'm telling you. Big yeah, hundred percent. Now let's jump into the hot topic, which is negative reviews. I mean, as you mentioned, it's something that yes, I agree with you, sellers. We've been reaching a point that we know that dealing with Amazon is difficult, especially if it comes to removing a negative review. You get a lot of copy-paste answers. There's not really a clear way of how to appeal it. There's not really a guideline of how to interact with them to make it basically a successful removal from a specific listing. So I want to basically use these things I just say about what is happening in the Amazon space and tell you, can you tell us a little bit about what are some of the things you, you guys are doing at TraceFuse to actually determine when it's actually worth fighting for a negative review or not? Because I guess that's the number one thing you guys have defined as a company because if you go for all the negative reviews, you will go crazy, right? So tell me a little bit about how it works so people can understand, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, the way that we do things is, you know, we, we do initial demos for all clients. And so we do is we, we grab their merchant IDs what we do is we go ahead and take a look at the merchant ID and we pull all the ASINs, all the parent ASINs, right? Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we take a look at those and, and we kind of assess the one, two, and three stars. We go after all critical reviews, what Amazon calls critical reviews. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we highly encourage people to grab more four and five stars. I know that's a very basic statement and we would hope that everybody would do that. But mm -hmm. I, the analogy I always use, it's kind of like a diet. You know, it's like if you eat right and you go to the gym, you're going to lose weight and you're going to look better, right? If you just eat right, don't go to the gym. Or if you just go to the gym and don't eat right, the process can still happen but it's not quite as fast. So I always tell people, hey, what are you doing to get more positive four and five star reviews, right? You should have some kind of a process. There are a lot of great softwares out there. You can do that. Um, and then on our side, what's, what we're doing is we're knocking down the one, two, and three stars. And what we're doing there is we actually grab all of the reviews. So we collect mm -hmm. those off of Amazon. We've been doing that for about five years. What we do is we grab all those reviews. And then what we do is we run them through our software. Our software is all AI driven software. And we built it out, um, you know, what, when we first started, it was very basic software. Now it's obviously a little more complex or a lot more yeah. complex through the knowledge and stuff that we've learned through, through filing. But what it really looks at is the, is the keywords from a high level view is we look at certain keywords. So if somebody cussed in a review or mentioned pricing, anything that's in violation of Amazon's terms of service, everything we do needs to be in, in violation of Amazon's terms of service. We don't go after ratings, right? We have to go after reviews. Mm -hmm. Ratings are... You know, there's nothing, there's no way to, to violate anything with a rating, right? Unfortunately, right? What we look at is reviews. There needs to be something actually physically written. And then what mm -hmm. we do is we we run that through the software. And what it does, it kind of gives us, or it does give us a probability score. So it'll kind of nice. tell us, hey, this is the probability of us getting this removed. Hey, this is something in regards to FBA and packaging. And, or they mentioned, once again, as I said, pricing, and they mentioned a competitor. There's a lot of different things. The minute that Amazon changes their terms of service, we modify our software because there can be nice. changes either good or negative, right? In, in regards to that. So we're, our thing is we're super hyper-focused obviously on making sure that we're, that it's compliant or it's not compliant. And so when we run those through the software, it gives us a probability. Then what we do is we start filing cases. There's no automation on Amazon when it comes to filing cases. I think we all yeah. know that. So what we do is we um, train our, the people that do the filings, we train them on how nice. to file with Amazon and we, our big thing is really data, right? I mean, it's data, it's how our methodology, and our, but it's our, our data as well. It's, you know, if you're a seller and you go to Amazon and say, hey, I think I'm being attacked, look into this, you're going to get a templated email and says, hey, not a problem. We love you, but, um, you know, whatever. We'll look into this when we have some time, whatever. Not really. That's not what the template says. But you get my point. The idea of it is, is yeah. they, they don't have the time for that, right? I mean, if there's yeah. 1.5 million active sellers on Amazon, if everybody sent an email a day, it's 1.5 million emails. Yeah, it's impossible. So, um, and, and really at the end of the day, Amazon loves sellers, but they really care about the buyer experience. I, I think we all know that as well. So, you know, what we do is we actually provide more filing cases. We file cases that are data driven. That's kind of the, the key to what yeah. we do. Um, and we understand which departments will react to certain types of reviews. And that's only, we only know that because of failing thousands of times, you know, where we yeah. got a hot no for the first three years. And so now, um, now we've, we've had nothing but phenomenal success. The other thing that's interesting with AI is that if Amazon changes a policy on the back end, we'll start to see our probability score go from a 95 to maybe an 82, which means mm, the, okay. I say the, the templates that we use, but we're constantly changing the messaging there um, yeah. because we have to test and see what gets Amazon to react to stuff. I mean, 
once again, Amazon's busy, busy. And so we have to figure out how do we get in front of the right people and how do we get them to take a look at the data that we've sent to them, make an assessment and either A, remove the review or maybe even the buyer's account. We'll kind of talk about the, the different strategies there. Um, but it's, you know, we like I said, it's it's not easy. I think as sellers know, it's they just assume that there's nothing you can do. And it's just like yeah. part of doing business on Amazon. It's like, and when we start removing reviews, we started doing this, people were kind of like, eh, are you sure this isn't That's black hat? Then yeah, like, no, they're, they're doing not, something there. Yeah. Something yeah. Funny. yeah, yeah. Something like, are you sure? And I'm like, no, it's not Black Hat. It's 100% compliant. I wouldn't do anything, you know, that would be against Amazon's terms of service. I, they're not somebody I want to go up against last time I checked, right? I want to make sure we're compliant with everything. So that's the thing is now it's happening. We're in a crazy situation now where we get, I mean, I get seven to 10 leads a day because wow. what happens, as we know, in the Amazon space, like, you know, you have groups, right? D different groups, and they're all over the all over the world. And when somebody yeah. in that group tries the one service, success, have, yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. one success, <laughs> and then all of a sudden they just tell everybody. And so now it's like I've never been in a in a space where they just automatically spread the word for you. It's like the weirdest thing because wow. I'm used to like SEO and got to yeah. drive content, Google I got all this ads, stuff. Facebook ads, yeah, Google, yeah, that. everything. <laughs> I've got to do it all, right? I got to be able to full full force. And I'm looking back and going. Man, I've got to I've got to focus on hiring and less focus on on getting the word out because people are naturally getting the word out for us. So it's been, um, like I said, I think it's been it's been an absolute blessing. And once people know that we can really do, and their their accounts aren't in jeopardy or they're never you know in any weird situation, um, like I said, some, some good things are happening, and we're you know we're only going you know we're we're, we're doing that nice little yeah. hockey stick growth that everybody's looking for. I love it. And, and something that I like about what you've been describing about your tool and, and the AI behind this, because I come from an engineering background as well, is the fact that you keep using feedback to readjust the probability of, of removing or not a review, because I'm guessing maybe that's not the case here, that if you use a specific template, a specific procedure that's not successful, you keep adapting, adapting, or do you tailor the perfect way to get through and get it removed, right? So you're always testing, basically, the methodology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I did want to tell you that I, I did stalk you a little bit. Congratulations on the Rolls Royce <laughs> thing. When you first started out, buddy, that was nice. Not, not a bad company to work for last time I checked. But I know, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> the, the, really it is. It's an interesting thing. Feedback and, and understanding Amazon, because I joke around, but it, it is true that the only, the only constant thing on Amazon is change, right? We, yeah. have, we have to understand that as sellers, like the minute that we think that everything is good and there's nothing changed, guess what? Just blink and then all of a sudden something changes. And so we're constantly, we're used to that with Amazon. And once again, it's Amazon's changing policies, right? They're doing what's best for the consumer. And so we get that. So we have to make changes ourselves. And so, you know, that's in our dashboard, that's in our software, that's in, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that we change, but our thing is we want to stay on top of it. We're using the feedback that we're getting to know what kind of decisions Amazon's making on the back end, because obviously we don't know that, but the data will tell us that, right? So if we have a, a huge set of data, the more reviews that we, mm -hmm. that we file and that we get removed, the better the information becomes for machine learning and AI. So that's what's interesting is that in the beginning, it was better and better and better. Now it's like, it's mm -hmm. a beast, right? Now we've got this machine that we're looking at and going, man, this is awesome. Because we can, you know, the minute Amazon makes a change, we we know it because we're looking at the data and saying, hey, there's something funny going on here, right? Or there's, some, there's a change that happened. Mm -hmm. And so we're making those assessments. We know there's always going to be change. And so we're yeah, constantly perfect. trying to stay ahead and saying, hey, we don't overuse, you know, I say templates, but once again, our, the, the things that we use, I say templates, but they're, they're constantly changing. So it's like the yeah. one that we used two weeks ago could be very yeah, different yeah, than the one it, we yeah. use today. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. That, that's actually important that you mentioned overuse because I guess that might be a question people might uh, have that it's like, if you start using the template over and over for every single person, then you, you could uh, potentially have an effect in the account integrity. But it, I mean, if you keep changing based on, on the policy and the feedback, that's not the case here, which is, I guess, one of the things most like people ask you a lot when, when yeah. they want to onboard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, another thing I want to mention, which I feel uh, people might also be uh, intriguing to understand around the service, like, what are the timelines with this? Because let's be honest, a lot of people don't really, uh, really know how to do this, remove negative uh, reviews. That's why they hire you. But the, the timelines, like, do you have like a, a scale of like, this specific type of review when people mention price takes one week to remove. Uh, if people talk about competition, it takes one month. Is is there like a scale you use for that? It's really random based on how Amazon reacts to your plan of action. Yeah, yeah I mean, it really, because you have to realize like it depends on obviously the category and how many cases mm -hmm. have been filed. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. variables that we look at there. Usually we'll get an answer back within 
potentially some a few hours to a few days. Depends on the department. Okay. It depends on how many people are filing cases. Um, our goal really is at the end of the day is that you know we we have a, a thing. Our three pillars are going to be our data that we talked about earlier. It's going to be our methodology, the different places that we file and what we've learned through filing with the wrong departments and the terminology mm-hmm. and everything. And then really is perseverance. It's it's really going after Amazon. I say going after Amazon. It's just if we don't get a response, yeah. we send a second you know case, of we course. do a third yeah. case. You know, once again, we're just we're reminding them what we got going on. Amazon likes what we're doing because of the fact that we do the investigative work for them, right? We're not saying, hey, we don't send an emotional email. Oh my gosh, I'm being attacked. Look into this, or hey, Amazon, what's going on over there? Are you guys even working? You know, we don't nothing like that. We're saying, yeah, doing the work they should be doing in the first place. <laughs> finding exactly. The, the exactly. <laughs> we we say, hey, listen, this is these are the issues. This is the reason why this is a sock puppet account or a fake buyer's account. Yeah. And what we do is we have we use data and statistics. So we say statistically, what are the odds that these three buyers' accounts all bought the same products from us and wrote the exact same reviews? They wrote, this is the worst product in the world with three explanation yeah. marks. Well, for us, it's not, it's all data driven. So it's like statistically, that's impossible, right? So mm-hmm. what we're doing is we're building a case. So what we want Amazon to do is to be able to make a decision within minutes. We want them mm-hmm. to be able to look at some stuff, click on a few links, look at a few things and go, you know what? There is definitely something funny going on here. And hey, we should take down these buyers' accounts. So that's what we want to do is we want, we know Amazon has a set amount of time to respond. Um, If you're asking Amazon to do five hours of research for you, it's just not going to happen. They just don't have the time and bandwidth for that. Five hours times millions of sellers. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, they, (laughs) they would have to hire everybody in the United States twice or something. So, yeah, that's what we look at is like, how can they go and assess it, make a good decision within minutes' time? That's always our goal. When we're filing, we're saying, hey, we want to have a lot of great information in there, make it very easy to read, very easy to make an, a, a decision, lead with data and then with probability and statistics and saying, what's the probability of this? And then at that point, that's why we have such a high success rate. Very good. And tell me a little bit about what is the interaction of the seller on on this whole um, interaction between, in this case, the company, TraceFuse and Amazon, like... It, based on your experience, does uh, would you require a lot of documentation sometimes from sellers to back up your cases, or, or most of the time with the data you already have and, and the understanding of the uh, terms of condition, that's most of, uh, more than enough to fight most of the cases? Yeah. yeah, we don't really need a lot of um, you know a lot of data or anything from the sellers because a lot of times the sellers don't have the information that we need anyways. We, we've already collected those reviews, so. What we do is, I mean, it's easy. We want to keep it easy for the seller. You, they've got enough things to deal with when it comes to Amazon. So what mm-hmm. we look at there is what we need to do is we, we create an email address. They give us, you know, they, they give us access and we get permissions just to file cases and we file the cases. So they can see the cases that are being filed. Um, sometimes we also file with other departments as well, but mainly it's who Seller Central is who we're filing cases with. They can see those. Um, okay. But the data that we grab is from our own data. There's not really anything mm, else that, okay. that we would need. Only thing we ask of the seller is to not also file cases, right? Because there's a strategy <laughs> that we do, right? So yeah, we they start one panicking. chef in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, they get nervous. Yeah. They're like, they start, no, 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 no. I'm like, hey, you got it. You've already had your chance, right? Now you're going to give us a chance. And if we have one chef in the kitchen, the meal will come out great. You have two chefs in the kitchen. There's going to probably be yeah. a fight. So yeah. at the end of the day, we say, hey, give us some time. to start seeing the reviews and being removed. The good thing about what we do, it's all performance driven. There's no upfront fee. There's no retainer or anything like that. We file cases and we don't move reviews. We don't get paid. So yeah. we're not in the business of filing cases and not getting them removed. That's not our, our business model. It is to Which remove I love, reviews. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, very good, very good. And now um, I'm just trying to understand as well how frequently we should do this because let's be honest, most people nowadays have some kind of negative reviews, right? And and I just want to get your experience here in terms of what is the best plan of action. And what I mean by this is will you say this is a kind of action we should do to your company on a monthly basis or only when we get a lot of negative reviews? Like what is usually the trends you see there? Like now when this is the moment I need to tackle my negative reviews, right? Because everybody has negative reviews. Like when people should start taking action based on on what you see with your clients and, and your experience. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So our, our clients, we have two types of clients. You're either proactive or reactive. That's really mm-hmm. what it comes down to. People that are saying, hey, I'm, you know, I, I've got these reviews. I want to start knocking them down. I want to start getting the negative reviews down. I know it's going to help ESR. It's going to help me be more searchable. It'll help my lower my PPC cost. So that there's some, usually the bigger sellers understand the value in that. Like, hey, listen, I just want to clean it up. Mm-hmm. Um, other people, you know, go from a 4.2 to, or a 4.3 to 4.2 and they, and they lose 
30% of their sales and they come to me and say, oh my God, please help us. What can you do? Can you remove the reviews? And we can, right? Depending on if there's violations against Amazon's terms of service, yeah. which the high percentage of the time there is. So we always, I always tell people, hey, it's, you know, a lot of the times I, I joked around about this is that people wouldn't get alarms on their car until somebody broke into it, mm -hmm. right? It's like, or you're not go, you don't go get health insurance until you get diabetes. And it's like, well, it's not too late, but you, you should have been a little more proactive. So I try to encourage people to be proactive. Hey, let us take a look at it. Um, our dashboard makes it very, very easy to add ASINs. Nice. So we have a lot of people during, you know, right before Prime, a few weeks before Prime or a month before Prime. Clean it, yeah. yeah, I want to clean yeah. it up a little bit and get it to the, to get it to that that next step. So once again, try not to be reactive because that's, you know, our thing is to remove negative reviews because we also have to figure out how many reviews it's going to take to get you back up. If you're at a 4.3 okay. and you don't want to go to a 4.2, then you you got to put a moat around the house, right? And yeah, you never course. know what's going to happen. So what you got to do is start knocking down those negative reviews. We actually take in the dashboard, you'll see it, but we, we go out actually four decimal points. So if you're at a mm. 4.2861, you'll kind of see when the reviews get removed and the positive reviews get added, you'll start to see when you're heading back up that to that 4.3. So we do that because everybody, most people want to know, hey, what is, you know, to get to the next tier, what is that yeah. going to take, right? And so we do that on the back end of the dashboard. They'll be able to see everything in the dashboard, all the reviews that have been removed, they, um, you know, and they'll be able to see the, you know, how many remove one, twos and three stars. They'll actually see the reviews. You click on it, goes to a 404 page. So it's all very, very easy to see. We do invoicing on Fridays. So Fridays are a pretty fun day for, for us. <laughs> and it's great for the clients too. That's when we see everybody go look at the dashboard. So that's why you are so happy today, right? I, I didn't want to bring it up, but Friday's a pretty good day. I'm, I'm pretty happy on Fridays. You know, we, we slide into the weekend. I see invoicing going out. I see happy customers mm -hmm. and happy sellers. And, you know, I, I couldn't be happier. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, let me ask you something. And, and this is mainly because some people want to be educated in terms of what reviews are more difficult than others. And maybe you have some, some insights about this. It's like, are there some reviews that regardless of, doing the right methodology and everything sometimes being transparent like they are very difficult to remove like certain specific type of reviews that maybe you can share just for people to to understand like which are have more realistic um to success rate to be removed compared to the typical ones you remove on a daily basis yeah yeah, yeah so with what we do we're obviously once again needs to be in violation of amazon's terms of service mm -hmm. if we look at all kinds of reviews and it seems like maybe you just have a bad product like we had mm -hmm. um a aggregator and we'll say who that came to us and said, Hey, mm -hmm. we want to remove these reviews. And we looked at them and it was a toxic product. And, and, wow, and, okay. and so I just said, well, what do we got going on here? They're like, well, yeah, it is bad. Like the product is bad, but we need to, <laughs> we've got like 30,000 yeah. units we need to sell. And I'm like, okay, yeah, but you're a... like putting the toxic product and you admit that it's not working. Like I was like, I'm sorry guys, I, I we can't work together. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not here to send toxic stuff out. Yeah, to yeah. Like it just didn't, for me, morals are important, right? It's yeah. not always money driven. And so in that situation, you just have a bad product, right? And you're yeah. just going to have to get rid of it, especially if it's toxic, right? So, yeah. you know, now I understand that, that people start off with a product and they, you know, iterate and they change things, they do things, and now it's better. So we can go after those reviews, right? Because at that point, mm -hmm. we've made the product better. We all started somewhere, right? And we've, we've improved those things. We, what people have to realize is that they need to be in violation of Amazon's terms of service. But what's really interesting, and I touched on it earlier, is we also can go after buyer's accounts. So what I mean mm, by that okay. is you can have a buyer's account that that writes, I say legit reviews, I'm air quotes, so everybody, if anybody can just hear me, um, that are legit. But if we can prove that the buyer's accounts are fake, even if the reviews look legit, we can remove those buyer's accounts. Oh. So that's where we do like an escalation. And that's where okay. I was saying earlier, where you, if you had like three accounts that you know only Doing bought same, your products, yeah, yeah. yeah and they wrote yeah. the exact same reviews. It's usually a virtual assistant that got lazy, just copy and pasted yeah. the reviews, right? And then guess what? For your competitors, guess what they do there? They buy the product and give them five stars. So we go and we take a look at that and say, okay, Amazon, like clearly something's going on here. We usually, our velocity of reviews or one star reviews are, is one a day. All of a sudden we're getting 10 in a day for the last three mm -hmm. days. Like, what are we looking at here? And so we go in and say, what's the, once again, statistically, what is the probability of this happening? So a lot of the times if people see legit reviews and they're like, there's no way you can get those removed. Sometimes we can look at buyer's accounts. And if we can prove to Amazon that somebody's using that to attack you, then we can get those removed, even if they look legit, even if they look legit. So it's um, pretty awesome. It's once again, the methodology, and there's a lot of things that we Love do that, that are, yeah, that mm -hmm. are pretty crazy that we've learned over the years. Um, you know, just the knowledge of, of banging our heads on the wall and realizing that what wasn't going to work and figuring out what does work with Amazon. Great, great. 
now so we can start concluding today's episode i think the last thing i want to start asking you is like is, are there any tips or maybe strategies you want to share with us in terms of what a seller should be on maybe yeah on a, on a proactive basis to manage the reviews and basically keep the consistency of tackling these negative reviews. I know we briefly touched early of what the type of sellers usually come to you, but are there some kind of uh, maybe, you know, strategy you would recommend on top of that to be able to navigate this even more efficiently? Yeah. yeah. I mean, really what it comes down to is, you know, Amazon, as much as you think Amazon works for you, they, they kind of don't, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day. So what you want to do is if you can figure out any data that backs up your, mm -hmm. the thoughts that you've been attacked or that there was a, a review that was bad, once again, you can look at, you know, maybe the buyer's account. There's a lot of different things you can look at, but you don't want to just assume Amazon's going to do the work that you mm. tell them to do, right? At the end of the day, you want to have data. And so you want to yeah. be able to say, hey, I feel like we're being attacked. And let me explain to you why I feel that. And let mm. me show you some things that that back up my case of us being, you know, attacked. And so don't, it doesn't need to be emotionally ridden, right? It needs to be, is think about two adults talking to each other, right? You're not there to get into a fight. You're there to explain your situation, explain what you've got going on. But data is going to be the key, not being emotional, giving it to Amazon and then perseverance. Don't expect for them to respond on the first case, right? Sometimes you have to file a second or a third one. Um, there can be escalation emails. If you know how to do escalation emails with certain departments that can work well. But once again, you have to have the data. You can't just waste people's time and send yeah. escalation emails and be like, hey, there's something going on here. Look into it. Really, yeah. really figure out what you can do. There's a lot of great softwares that you can go and you can you know, pe put pieces of the puzzle. You're going to have to be a little bit of a detective, right? If in the beginning, <laughs> you got to be able to figure out, okay, this is this, this is this, and how do I tie this into a case that Amazon can look at and go, okay, clearly there's something going on here. We should look into this. We should spend some time doing this because they want to obviously keep the platform clean and keep everybody in compliance with the TOS. Very good. Very good. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, so much knowledge today and so many insights. I'm pretty sure people are going to find it so so useful, especially even myself. Like, you know, when we talk about negative reviews, it's it's like a Pandora box. People know it's there, but not a lot of people is willing to open it. And it, I love this episode because we are basically going deep. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been a pleasure, you know, to, to have you on the show. I think be, to c conclude, because I'm sure this is just the beginning for you with the company in trace views maybe just want to ask you and i do this with all my guests like is there any anything coming up in the future for the company in terms of new technology or something you wanna you wanna share in here if not that's totally fine but i usually like to sneak peek before our people <laughs> yeah no no i get it yeah we we are working on a few different things i mean right now we have you know obviously the the, the software on amazon is, yeah. is going really really well for us we do right now just work on dot com and in, in the us platform um, we're looking okay. to expand that to right because filing cases is different in, in different areas and the way that oh, you file cases and okay. yeah so we we're just on on the the us platform for now we eventually will be branching out so we're working on a lot of that right now um and kind of how to file cases and how to get access to file cases because sometimes the process is a little different in the eu and different areas okay. so we are working on that and um, we do have some other software that we're working on well, we can't go heavy into what that is obviously because i don't want to you know leak the yeah. information and then somebody else i'm sure somebody else is trying to do it too but we're, yeah. we're, we're pretty good at this point with the engineers that we have on being able to awesome. take a problem and be able to figure it out. So I'll have some, maybe next time when you have me on the podcast. Yeah, we'll let me know once you release yeah. it. I'll feature well, that here first. That's good. That's <laughs> awesome. That'd be awesome. Good. So I know you have a, also a special promotion for guests today uh, that want to explore your service. So maybe you can tell us more about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So. We, we decided to put together a special offer for you guys. I know you have a, a heavily engaged audience and I know you've got a, a pretty huge uh, you know, a consulting firm and I want to tell you congratulations on that. So yeah, what we're doing is we're, we're offering to your audience $500 off. Um, nice. So what that means is um, on their first invoice, they would get $500 off. We charge $250 for every successful review that we remove. Um, and yeah. once again, we file a case, we remove a review, we get paid. If we file a case, it doesn't get removed, we don't get paid. So it's all performance right. driven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no risk at all. Literally no risk. And that's the whole point of it. And so we'll give them $500 off their, their first invoice. So anybody that comes and signs up, there's a landing page. I'm sure it'll be right here below our conversation. Yeah, I will add it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's my little, that's my below there. Um, and what you can do is you can click on that. And you can fill that out. We'll do a demo for you. We'll run your merchant ID, um, show you everything. We'll do a demo for you. And, and we're not even, we don't do heavy sales. I mean, what I mean by that is it's really education. We're the only company that can do this. So at the end of the day, you, if it makes nice. sense, if it pencils out from an ROI perspective, then we move forward. And if not, 
then awesome. You can watch and we'll continue to give you things that you can do to be able to remove them on your own because we want to be able to support you along in this yeah. journey. So once again, $500 off for your audience, man. Pretty exciting. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. And thank you very much for the offer. And yes, looking forward to having the future. As I said, I know very, a lot of exciting things are coming and I can't wait, man. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for your time, man. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you.